Today we're going to take a deep dive into DxO's Photolab 8. I introduced the software as a tool for astrophotography in a previous video, and as I said in the previous video, I am absolutely stunned by the software's application to astrophotography. I reworked about a dozen of my images, most of which now appear on the Sky Story Astro Bin, and the improvements I was able to achieve by adding Photolab 8 to the end of my Affinity Photo-based workflow were simply staggering. The reason I say that is, over the years, I've tried Lightroom, Capture One, and Luminar Neo. And all of them work very well for terrestrial photography. In terrestrial photography, we have a lot of light, which makes the photos information rich. And those types of applications work well with such photos. But when applied to astrophotography, where we are working with low information images with heavily stretched histograms, those types of applications frequently lead to gritty images, banding and aliasing, among other problems. But Photolab 8 applied to astrophotography as if the software had been made with such images in mind, and for all I know, it may have. Everything about the software, from the tools to the AI-driven components, just works remarkably well with astrophotography. Incredibly well. And not only is the software exceedingly powerful as a photo development tool, but it's also elegant in the mathematical sense. It is powerful, applicable to a broad range of photographic subjects, any kind of astrophotography image I can think of, and certainly any kind I have tried it on. And learning to use it is straightforward, even intuitive. It took me about 30 minutes to learn to use the application and about two hours to become fairly fluent in it. The layout was just so straightforward and everything made sense. So what I'm going to do is walk you through processing NGC 1333. This is a beautiful reflection nebula that becomes visible in the north around this time of the year. Now I've only had one partially good night to shoot it so far, and I was only able to image it for about six hours till the sky became entirely clouded over. And clouds were rolling in prior to that, so many of the images that I got were ruined. Of the entire six hours, only four hours passed the visual and subframe selector calling. However, while I'm going to spend more integration time on this image as soon as we get another clear night, I think the image's current deficits make it perfect to demonstrate the power of the software because, as we all know, four hours is not much integration time on a dim target. So this is an excellent chance to demonstrate what Photolab can accomplish with what is presently such a weak image. Now with ordinary photography, you would use tools such as Capture One, Lightroom, Luminar Neo, or Photolab 8 first. In them, you would do your essential image developing, and then if you have further touch-ups to make, you would then go over to a program like Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Astrophotography, however, requires virtually the opposite approach. You're going to need first to assess and then stack your images. And then, with the initial masters, you're going to want to de-blur and denoise them, and also remove the stars. I use PixInsight for that. You may use other tools for such jobs. Then you'll need to combine and edit those masters. There are various applications where you do this, but I use Affinity Photo because I prefer the power of layer-based editing. And when all of that's done, then you would export the images with stars or starless into Photolab 8. When it comes to dealing with stars, working with astrophotography images in Photolab 8 is interesting. You can develop starless images in Photolab 8, get the most out of those images, then go back to your layer-based photo editor and add back your stars. But I've also edited numerous images with the stars in them, and they just come out so well in Photolab 8. They look like stars with that magical glow. And that's because Photolab 8 gives you such precise control of the power of the lighting within images. The tool is very powerful. There's a lot of ground to cover, but let's begin by going over what for me is currently my complete Photolab 8 workflow. So as noted previously, with astrophotography, you're going to start with an image that's been stacked, deblurred, denoised, and fully developed. And that is the case for the image now on the screen. If you would like a thorough understanding of the workflow that I used to get this low information image to this point, please check out my playlist, Image Processing Complete Workflow, which I put out just a couple months ago, and walks in depth with explanations through the entire workflow that I used to take images from PixInsight into a layer-based photo editor Affinity Photo in my case, and then get them ready for final adjustment. It's linked in the description. So let's dive in. This is the furthest this image can be pushed with PixInsight and Affinity Photo. And unfortunately, with only four hours total integration, it's a weak image. There isn't a lot of information there. Can we use Photolab 8 to turn this weak image into something presentable? 
Let's go through the Photolab 8 workflow for astrophotography and see what happens. I've opened Photolab 8 and I'm now in the photo library where I'll just click on the image and a display will appear in the library. Double clicking on the image causes us to go over to the customize tab where we can do our editing. The first thing I'm going to do is turn on DxO Smart Lighting and DxO Clearview Plus. These are AI powered tools that adjust and balance the illumination within the image and clear up haze within the image. Now, I honestly did not expect these tools to work well because typically these tools and these types of software are made for terrestrial photography, but it just somehow works so well with astrophotography. I have never seen this before with this type of software. I'll adjust the smart lighting slider bar until I've brought up the clouds hidden in the darkest shadows. And for now, I'm going to leave alone Clearview Plus. We'll come back to it later and use it as one of the finishing touches for setting the final clarity of the image. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the Selective Tone tool, which makes amazingly precise adjustments to the light curve. And it must also be AI driven, really, really good AI, because so often with astrophotography, tools like this result in banding, gradiness, and even aliasing within the image, not to mention color artifacts, but in Photolab 8, it, it works beautifully, unless you push it too hard, but if you push anything too hard, you'll break it. But here, it just works great. So my goal at this moment is to make the cloud structure over the dark material really stand out and also darken the surrounding haze a bit so that the central structure stands out from the background. This is a challenging task, but between the combination of the smart lighting tool and the selective tone tool, it actually goes fairly quickly. Already, I have the adjustments that I want. Now I'm going to click on the Detail tab and adjust the Unsharp Mask. Affinity Photo has three sharpening tools, the Unsharp Mask, the Clarity tool, and the High Pass filter. Photolab 8 just offers the Unsharp Mask, but it seems to be as effective as Affinity Photo's three tools put together, and in some ways more so, because I can push it really, really hard, and I don't start seeing artifacts around the edges of images, which I would see in Affinity Photo or other photo editors. And I can push it really hard without the image devolving into grittiness, which makes me think there is an extremely sophisticated algorithm and possibly AI augmenting what you're doing with the Unsharp mask as well to ensure you get the best outcomes. And if that's the case, then once again, it is just amazing it works so well with astrophotography. That's why I'm really blown away by this software. I've experimented with such tools in Luminar Neo and Capture One with astrophotography and they're awful. I mean, awful with astrophotography. But Photolab 8 works so beautifully with astrophotography. Now I'm going to go over to the local adjustments tab and apply some mass. I first want to reduce the highlights and the brightest points of the structure. That'll bring out the subtle detail hidden within. I'll just place a control point mask over it, adjust the Luma slider, to restrict the control point to just operating on the brightest points within the selection, and then use the Selective Tone tool within the tab to bring down the harsh brightness. The process goes fairly quickly and is almost like working with the Curves tool on slider bars. I'll bring down the highlights so that it's not blinding and the detail hidden within can show through. And then I'll drop the brightness of the darker points as well to help the structure of the detail stand out. Then I'll further enhance the structure with an adjustment to the sharpness slider bar as well as the contrast and micro contrast slider bars. Contrast controls coarse changes between light and dark regions. Micro contrast controls fine changes between light and dark regions. And then a slight adjustment to Clearview Plus within the mask intelligently further defines the high frequency information in that bright area. And I'll tone down the exceeding brightness within that region of the image just a little bit more by pulling down the exposure. Now the adjustments in Affinity Photo made some color changes right here where a bright star is reflecting off the nebula that I don't feel are quite right. In other images that I've seen, much higher quality images from NASA, that region tends to look orangish and red. So I don't really like that magenta hue that's in there. So I'm going to put a mask over that region now and change that. So in the mask layer section to the top right, I'll hit the plus sign to tell Photolab 8 that this is a new layer and then I'll place another control point mask at that region. You can grab the circles to expand or shrink the control point mask, and you can use the chroma and luma slider bars to control what the mask will affect. Now I'm going to go to the HSL color wheel tool, select the color channel that is closest to the colors I'm trying to adjust, and this will move the inner tab over the range of color that I'm affecting. Then I'm going to make adjustments to the color's saturation, luminosity, and uniformity. Saturation defines the intensity of the color, Luminosity defines the color's brightness, and uniformity 
defines how sharply or slowly the color spreads over a region. For example, if you want the colors to slowly transition as they spread out over a region, you would make it more uniform. If you want sharper color changes, as in a stepped region, you move the slider bar to the left to make the color transitions less uniform. Now that I have the color there like I want, I want to adjust the color in this little region right down here, where another bright star is reflecting off the nebula. Because this image has very little information, remember it's under four hours of integration. There just isn't good solid information to make intense color or even intense detail within the image. So I have to use this tool, Photolab 8, to enhance everything. So I'm going to drive out the saturation. I'm going to do so harder than I normally would within an image to see if I can get a nice usable image out of so little integration. So once again, I'll place another control point mask. And just as before, I'm going to use the color wheel, this time set in the orange and yellow ranges to intensify the saturation and brightness of that area. Now I'm going to go over to the color tab section and there I'm going to go down to the color channels tool. Here I'm going to make some global adjustments to the color channels that will further improve the color throughout the nebula, remove some of the traces of blue-green from within the space, and by enhancing the green, which strongly affects human perception of brightness, will also thereby improve the appearance of the cloud structures all around this region. With that done, I'm going to go up to the light tab, click on it, and do some work on the curves tool. It really is awesome to see that the Photolab 8 Curves tool has a luminance channel, and I'm going to adjust the luminance channel here on the Curves tool to make the regions of space stand out from the vast dark nebula at the heart of this structure, and also to further define the cloud structures over the dark nebulous regions. A luminance channel on a Curves tool is very useful because it allows you to adjust brightness and contrast within an image without at all affecting its saturation or any other attribute of its color apart from luminance. With that done, I'm going to do some work with the Clearview slider, it's like an AI-powered contrast tool, or maybe it's just a very sophisticated algorithm, but it will further refine the sharpness and structure within the image, very usefully or intelligently, further defining the differences between the light and shadow throughout this entire image, which helps all the structures within this very low information image to stand out. Now in just a few minutes, I've gotten the image entirely where I want it, but there is one last thing I wanna show you. The image doesn't need more color change, but it's really important to illustrate this tool. It's the HSL tool in the color tab. It is effectively a color and hue mask tool. You can use it as a typical HSL tool to shift colors within your image, or you can click the picker in the middle and use the tool to select entire ranges of color and hue. So it operates only on those colors and hues. I'll move the mouse cursor down to the HSL tool and click on the icon that looks like a dropper right dead center. This will turn on the color selection tool. Then I'll go on the image and click on a place where there's color that I want to adjust. That color range is now selected on the HSL tool. I can move the inner dots to expand the color range that is now affected toward the orange or the magenta, and I can move the outer dots to control the feathering between colors. This is very important as it enables you to make smooth transitions between color changes. There's also a band outside the circle, kind of like a spectrum. It shows the range of colors that are affected. I can move the dot that's outside that band to change the colors that are selected to other colors on the color wheel. But you have to be careful with that if you push too far, you'll get bending between colors. This HSL tool gives the usual sliders for saturation, vibrance, and luminance. Remember, saturation controls the color's intensity, vibrance strengthens weaker shades of color, and luminance controls the overall brightness within that color area. And then there is that very useful uniformity slider, which I haven't seen in other software. As discussed previously, you use it to control how quickly colors change within the range that you're working on. If you want a gradual color change so that colors seem to blend more naturally into each other, you increase the uniformity. And if you want a faster color change, like you might see over a rippled object, decrease it. I think this image is about where it needs to be. Let's compare the changes that we have made to the original image as imported over from Affinity Photo. Photolab 8 has this very convenient compare tool right up here, just left of center. The tool can be set to compare where you are in your editing process versus where you were just before you started a new tool or new set of adjustments, or it can be set to compare your adjustments to the original image. To control what it compares to, just click the down arrow and select what image you want to compare your current image to. Let's compare where we have the image now to what we started with. This was the original image, and this is where we're at now. The comparison tool is more useful than just showing how far you've come. 
Comparing where the edit currently stands with the original image can reveal flaws that may have turned up in the developing. For example, I can see right here that increasing the brightness of the cloud structure over the dark nebula has somewhat gotten in the way of these fine structures standing out. So I'll go back over to the local adjustments tab and place another control point mask over that region. I don't want to affect the darker regions anymore, so I'll restrict the luminance of this mask by changing the luma slider. Notice how the highlighted area on the image where the mask is active changes as the luma slider is moved. Moving up allows it to stretch over darker areas and moving down restricts it to brighter areas. I'm going to restrict the mask to areas of mid brightness and higher. Now some changes to contrast and micro contrast should help those small structures to stand out against the rest of the nebula. Now I think the image is about where I want it. It's time to go ahead and export this image. My monitor is calibrated to the display P3 color space and I have an export template set up to take advantage of that. You can see the progress of the export right down here. The DxO altered image will appear with the suffix DxO on it so that you don't confuse it with your original image. DxO will not overwrite your original image. Now I'm going to go back into Affinity Photo and drag in the adjusted image as a new layer. I'll place the layer below the stars but above all the previous layers and I'll leave the composite mode at normal so that it is opaque. Then I'll turn on the star layer and we can see the finished image. Without Photolab 8, this would have been the best that could be accomplished in Affinity Photo. It's not bad, but it's far from great. Now, just using Affinity Photo, I can improve this a great deal as I acquire more integration time. But, with only our not quite four hours of integration time, this is what can be accomplished by enhancing the image with Photolab 8. And for under four hours of exposure, that isn't bad. This is just such incredible and powerful software. And I, I know I've said this several times already, but I'm so surprised it works with astrophotography as well as it does. It works like it was designed for astrophotography. I'm guessing the AI was also trained to work on astrophotos. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so, because you just don't see this kind of performance elsewhere. It's 229 US for me in Canada. That's close to $300. It's not cheap. But when you think about it, compared to the cost of a telescope or a camera, or really just about anything else we would use for astrophotography, yeah, it's just a fraction of the price. We astrophotographers, we, and photographers too, we tend to focus on getting more equipment and better equipment with the idea that's going to make our images better. And I've posited and contended ever since I started this channel that most likely the equipment that we have is already good enough. And the real key to getting the best images is improving technique and the software tools with which we have to process our images. So if you choose to get Photolab 8, I do absolutely think it will be well worth your while. And I hope this video serves as both a useful example and tutorial for you. If you have any thoughts, observations, or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you liked this video and you like what you see on the Sky Story channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you choose to add Photolab 8 to your workflow, let me know after you give it a try. I'd love to get your thoughts on it. If you have an alternative tool that does just as well, I'd also love to know about that. And if you do things entirely different, that's cool too. Because I think in the end, we are all driven by the same passion to share the wonder of what's overhead. So have a blast doing astrophotography, learn something, and get out there and shoot that sky.